What's up everybody? It is Would You Eat It Wednesday and today's topic is organic Doritos. Would you eat it? Well, Doritos had to get into the organic game, didn't they? I mean, we had a good thing going and uh, then of course the processed food market is like, you know, we want a piece of that pie as well. So here we go, organic Doritos. What could go wrong, right? Probably a good thing. Let's find out. So I was like seeing what's in the comments before I go into my little spiel here and uh, one of the things today somebody put in some extra information for us and they put in the nutrition facts on the organic Doritos. And what does this tell us? It tells us calories, it tells us fat, it tells us carbs, it tells cholesterol and sugars and that kind of stuff. But does that tell us the whole story? No is the answer of course and what we want to look at first and foremost is going to be the ingredients label, okay? So the ingredients are going to tell us a whole lot more than the little number values on the back of the bag right there, okay? So going to the ingredients, I'm going to tell you up front, I'm a little impressed actually. I thought I was going to rip these guys apart, and I am a little bit, but they did make some improvements to the traditional Dorito, okay? The traditional nacho cheese flavored Dorito has uh, regular corn that was improved in the new one with organic corn. So you got something that's, uh, since it's organic, it's no longer a genetically modified corn, so that's a good thing. The old version had MSG in it, not good. It had artificial flavors and colors which aren't present in the new one. It had a couple other uh, things that aren't there anymore. Uh, the new one does have, like we said, the organic corn, which is a big improvement organic expeller pressed sunflower oil. So this is a different oil that they used in this one. However, not a very good one still, okay? It, the sunflower oil, any seed oil, vegetable oil, that kind of stuff is stuff that you definitely want to avoid. High in omega-6s. We'll do a whole nother video detailing oils, but for now you want to know that is something you do not want in your diet, okay? Maltodextrin, that's a sugar substitute, probably not so good. Sea salt, they're not using the real salt, they're using that term sea salt. We've talked about salt before as well, not so great. It's got organic skim milk, and again, that's one, That's another tricky one. We've done the milk video, so you know what's going on there. Maybe you can go back on our YouTube channel and check if you haven't seen the milk stuff. But the thing that I'm going to focus on today is natural flavors, because natural flavors are still in the Doritos White Cheddar Organic brand, okay? Now, the natural flavors is a big deal. Why, you might ask? Well, to get a little further detail, this is a book that I read, The Dorito Effect. This just happened to be in my repertoire. I've got quite a few books. Some of you have seen part of the collection before. But The Dorito Effect goes into detail on how Doritos pretty much single-handedly changed food forever, okay? They've got all kinds of tactics, and here's what The Dorito Effect is in a sentence, okay? The, the, the Dorito Effect is what happens when food gets blander and flavor technology gets better, okay? Food gets blander, flavor technology gets better. That is a problem for us and for a lot of reasons, okay? So flavors are what makes food seem like food to us, okay? That's why we have all these cravings for pizza and for Doritos and for ice creams and for all this other stuff. Usually that stuff has added synthetic stuff, natural flavors, stuff that wouldn't naturally occur in nature. Now at the same time, there's kind of a paradox going on, okay? Because while processed food has all these good flavors to it, our regular foods, our vegetables, our fruits, our meats, that kind of stuff, is losing its flavor. This is what the Dorito Effect is talking about. It goes into detail. A lot of pages in here discussing how this is happening, okay? So I'll give you a couple examples, okay? Chicken. Lots of people think chicken is a good, healthy source of food, but chicken has lost its flavor over time. Just in the last 50 years, as they've changed the way chicken is raised, if they put it in this confined lots, you know, we can talk about all the details about how they're not getting their sun, they're not getting their exercise, they're being loaded up with a grain-fed, unnatural diet that's fattening them up quicker, getting them to slaughter quicker so that the companies can make a profit faster. Now, in that process, something is lost, a little thing called flavor, okay? So you've got a blander chicken, although maybe we got more chicken to the market quicker, it is less, less taste and less nutrition. You'll find out those two are inextricably correlated, flavor and nutrition. They go together, okay? So this is an important thing and why we get so tricked all the time. So you think to yourself, why God, we kind of shake our head at the, fe at, the, <laughs> at the heavens and we're like, why God, why can't I just like food that is good for me? Why can't you know my taste buds just like food that is good for me? Well, it's because We've messed it up. We as humans have messed it up. It's not the big guy. It's not Mother Nature. You know, it's us. It's the way we are raising food up. Okay, so chicken is one of those examples. There's an example in the book of a wife who goes to all this trouble to try and duplicate her husband's, you know, childhood 
grandma's chicken recipe, okay? She tries all the different ingredients, she follows the recipe to a T, changes up the cooking times, she tries all the variables, can't get it right. All of a sudden one day, barred rock chicken, and the husband is like, oh my God, this is just like my childhood, okay? And it's because it was an organically raised chicken that actually had flavor. Had nothing to do with the recipe, had everything to do with the chicken itself, okay? So this is a little telling, okay? The chicken is the issue, just like the tomato itself has become the issue. You know if you've been to a real farmer's market and gotten a real tomato and it's got flavor explosion inside versus some of the stuff you usually buy at the grocery store, even if it's organic a lot of times, we've bred stuff to be more appealing to the eye first and foremost, visually appealing, and lower cost and greater yield. Those are the factors that businesses look at. They are not looking at flavor and they're not looking at nutrition. And again, those two are pretty much one and the same. So when you're losing out on the flavor, you're also losing out on the nutrition in there too. So that's why when you get a tomato, you're not necessarily as satisfied as when you get a Dorito because they haven't put any natural flavors in the tomato, okay? So it may look good on the shelf, not the same product we used to have. So you think to yourself, we don't have any nutritional wisdom in our DNA. It's not true, and they've shown it with goats. This book is fascinating, I'm telling you. Goats have nutritional wisdom. They proved it through experiments. A goat will know what to eat. If it's got a nut nutrient deficiency, it can go eat the right thing to take care of that deficiency. It can eat another food to take care of a certain illness. People have this too. It is a learned thing that you have to you know, train your body through. But it is inside of us. We've just unlearned it through all the processed foods that we eat in our lives, okay? So we think, you know, here's where the nutrition is because here's where the flavor is, but that's not really the case, okay? So this tells us a little bit why there's this constant rise in obesity. It's not for lack of willpower. It's not for lack of effort. It's not for lack of people trying to do the right things. It's certainly not for lack of people trying to count calories and do the right things that way, but the calorie counting game is a losing battle. This is why I tell people constantly, over and over again, it's not about calories. It's not about this thing right here. You know, you got that. It says 150 calories in a serving. So I can get away with eating those 11 chips and only get 150 calories. And that's not that bad a thing because I'll just eat, you know, certain things and stay under whatever my threshold is for that day and stay in a calorie deficit. I'm here to tell you, I don't care what everybody else says on all these different blogs and all of these different platforms. Calories is not the game, okay? Hormones is big part of the game. Sleep is a big part of the game. Stress is a big part of the game. All these factors play in your diet, your exercise. Yes, all that stuff, but it's not just calories. There's a lot of other things interplaying and I tend to get more into that in other videos, okay? So the natural flavors thing, this is what I'm harping on with Doritos because they were the pioneer in this field, okay? They started this by creating this device that you can pretty much plug a food in and out will come in a printout of all these different flavors and the way your tongue feels it and all this type of stuff. So they've got it broken down into science. They can duplicate it using different chemicals in the lab and duplicate that and make a chip taste like barbecue Doritos or nacho cheese or spicy chili or whatever you want it to be, they can recreate it. It's pretty amazing technologically, not so good for us as a society nutritionally and the obesity epidemic as we know. So, these are the things we need to watch out for. Here's the three, uh, three takeaways that he gives you in the book here, the Dorito Effect book. He tells you humans are flavor seekers. That's number one. Number two, in nature, there's an intimate connection between flavor and nutrition. I tried to pepper that in throughout this video here. Flavor and nutrition, they go together, okay? But they've hijacked this, which is problem. Number three, synthetic flavor technology not only breaks that connection, it also confounds it, okay? So this is the problem with natural flavors. It's not necessarily that they're super toxic to your system. You know, they're probably not doing you any favors, but what they are doing is they're reprogramming your tongue. They're hijacking your DNA. They're messing with all of your internal working senses and telling you this is good for you, which is why you mindlessly will put down chip after chip after chip without realizing it, okay? It's not even that they that they're that excited, but you get that crunch. They've got that flavor profile, and then you want that excitement again. You want that dopamine hit again. They know this, they know this. They engineered this, they created this, and everybody's copied this technology. So that's what you're working against with processed foods today. That's what the Dorito effect is all about, and that's why I would say, would you eat it, organic Doritos? I would not, okay? So, in a lot of these videos, people have complained that I'm always telling you what not to eat. I do want to give you a substitute. I want to start giving you some substitutes on things that you can eat. Here is my chip of choice right now. This is one that I found 
at Fresh Time. This is a Siete brand grain-free chip. They've got a few different flavors in there that you can check out. I found it at Fresh Time. They'll probably be carrying them at different places now. Um, it's made from mostly cassava flour. Cassava flour is a new thing you'll probably be seeing in a lot of health products coming out right now. Um, it is you know, low glycemic, it's good for your gut bacteria, it lowers blood sugar, it does all these good things. So this is why this is coming in as a substitute for all these corn products, all these grain products, this kind of thing. Kasva is, you know, it's yucca is another name for it. It's a root vegetable, so that's what they're making it from. So pretty cool stuff, and that is a good thing. And the, I've checked the ingredients for you on this Siete, and this is a pretty good one. You know, obviously you don't want to go crazy eating chips all the time, but if you're looking for a healthy substitute or a quasi-healthy substitute, something that you don't have to feel quite so bad about, this is a decent brand right here. Get yourself an organic salsa to dip it in. Really tasty, really good, and uh, yeah, stay away from your Doritos. Props to Doritos for trying to go the organic route and trying to change some things and make a few things better, but in the end, stay away from the Doritos, guys, all right? Would you eat it Wednesday? I will see you next time.